Okay. Hi, I'm Jarkko Sakkinen. I'm, I'm software engineer at, at Profian. I used to work for Intel for quite many years, mainly on STX and all kinds of TEE stuff. And, and I'm also like, like the maintainer for, for STX part of the, of the x86 tree. So I thought that it's no good time to give, give like some kind of status of how that work is going since it got into upstream during the COVID period. So, and STS, STX is, is, is different kind of beast than SMP and, and, and TDX because they are like virtual machine based T, like TEEs, whereas STS is kind of in the league of its own because it's, it's just based on a virtual address range. Uh, so what is confidence and computing? I've, I found, found this article that had like, like really good definition for it. Uh, first of all, it's, it's about isolation. So that, that, that anything outside the container cannot, cannot tamper or read the data. And on the other hand, it, it, it needs like, like, like to be attested by 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 a, by a third party, usually like the CPU vendor. In this case, in SCS case, Intel. And and how how, how things have, have been going on is that like in the 90s when web game, we had confidential computing because you were running your own server. And, 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 and when we moved to, to, to the cloud, we kind of moved away from confidential computing. So, and, and, and especially like in, in the public sector and, and, and in government sector and in military, you still need to actually build secure enclaves by building like separate data centers because of some requirements to process some data. So, so I think the confidence and computing was like born from this need that we need something in between building like separate physical data center and, and, and putting things straight to the cloud. It's of course not as secure as, as physical security, but it's still more a lot more secure than 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 than, than like like just trusting to the, to the cloud vendor. And so so in lots 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 of cases you 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 could you you, you could consider it instead of like, like having like actual physical security. In, S, in SGX, you basically define an address range for, for the enclave or the container. And, 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 and it has its own, 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 own database for page permissions and stuff like that called, called enclave page cache map. Which so we so because because um, confidential container cannot cannot trust the host in in anything. So it actually ha has to have its own database of permissions. With, with like normal PT permissions, you can of course restrict further, but but you cannot like 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 any way extend the permissions defined by the enclave page cache map. And, 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 and dur during the boot, uh, the firmware reserves like, like, like ranges of physical memory for, for, for enclave pages. And, and, for, for the, and, and these pages are, are encrypted when they when they leave from the CPU package, and 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 also also 
also CPU does access checks for, for those pages so that if you are inside the enclave, unless you are inside the enclave, you cannot, CPU will draw like general protection fault exception if you try to access any of, any of those pages. And, and, and there, there an, an enclave has like one page called SGX enclave control SGX enclave control structure that, that defines like all the properties of the enclave such as its its address range, uh, its like 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 measurement checksum and, and stuff like that, and 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 it has thread control structure bases that define all the fixed the entry points where, where you can enter the enclave by using E enter instruction, but but all, only through TCS entry points you can you can you can enter to the enclave mode. And and before you can enter the enclave, the whole the the the, the data is measured and 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 and. and and the final checksum is used as part of the identity when the enclave is running. And, and then, then for each TCS space, there's also this, this like a separate stack called state safe area that is used to store the register state when, when, when the CPU leaves from the enclave and, and it and, and anything basically that can cause a far, far jump out of enclave, any, any instructions such as syscall or anything causes a synchronous exit from it and, 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 and the state is stored to the state, state safe area. And so, so, uh, on, so in that enclave is like basically cannot do anything except calculations and for anything that, that requires like a syscall or anything, it has to consult the, like the host operating system. Uh, this picture tries to describe the current attestation scheme. There's, there's an instruction called e-report that, that basically like, 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 it, it, it creates a cryptographic re report with with C CMAC checksum of the enclave properties, and and then asks Intel sign. Then and and then the application can ask Intel side quoting enclave to to sign that with an attestation key, which is included inside the quoting enclave and 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 is changed for each 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 quoting enclave release, and 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 the quoting enclave asks asks the provision certificate enclave to sign sign the quote with the with the provision provision certificate key that is that is based that is generated from 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 the from the fused date the fused seed in each CPU and Intel has 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 their cloud service which which has certificate for every single CPU for, for the PCK. So that way, that way we can like build the full, full chain, chain, chain from, from the enclave to, to, the, to, the, to the CPU so that you can prove that, it, that the application is running inside like, like in genuine Intel CPU. The reason for, for splitting the Provisioning certificate enclave and quoting enclave to a separate enclave is that 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 you want like a minimum other surface for 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 the for 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 the functionality functionality 
that uses uses the fused data. So if 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 the attestation key is compromised, we can just always like revoking and Intel can release like a new coding enclave. So here here's the sequence in in practice these these all like like explode to bunch of protobuf messages so first first thing that that application does does is is to ask ask it asks the attestation key id for 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 ecdsa key because the ASMD daemon does have like a more support for multiple quote key algorithms but but at the moment only ecdsa is used and 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 then it asks ask for 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 target info for the quoting enclave which is kind of cryptographic uh, it, it cryptographically identifies the quoting enclave and 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 the application enclave can pass this to e report so that the that the With, and, and the E report will will sign sign the based on this target info will sign the report with the with the with the report key of the quoting enclave and 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 then 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 the application can pass the the attestation key ID and the report back to the quoting enclave and then then, then, then the quoting enclave can can decrypt the report with its, or ch ch sorry, check the it's it's not encrypted, it's signed. So check the signature of the report with its its with its report key. Uh, so. So the PCK is by practical means generated from these two last keys that are you, that that are generated from fused CPU data and various like like enclave specific specific properties. So 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 only PCE can generate the the PCK. That is valid. That, that that is that is valid for the certificate provided by Intel, and this report key is used used both 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 in in that e-report instruction. CPU will find the report key for the for for the for the quoting and based on the target info, and and also. Also, internally, the quoting enclave will, will use this e -get key, get key instruction to, to check the CMAC checksum. My, my work with SCX started with Skylake, and, and it was like a complete failure because at Skylake time, SCX was like it had it, it didn't have this the current attestation scheme yet. It had basically like EBIT based attestation scheme where Intel, if you wanted to build an enclave, Intel had had to license. You would have to license buy a license from Intel for each enclave, and and and. It wasn't like 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 a great success in in open source community. So 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 Gemini Lake was was the like was the first platform that changed the like how the how how how, how the whole whole thing work and provide this flexible launch control so that you can have basically like like sign your own enclaves. And, 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 and that was also the initiation for the patch series, which took like a, quite a long time, well, over three years. But finally, in the end, end of year 2020, we got the whole thing in the upstream. And 
as of today, even though we gave a lot of time for, for competitors to catch up, it's still like the only, only confidential computing technology that is fully in the mainline kernel, both, both the guest and host side. So, well, it, does, it, it doesn't have guest and host side because it's, it's not based on the, on, on the VM concept in the first place. And, and this, this, is, this is the post, post upstream timeline. The first release was in February 2021. And, 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 and in 5.13 in, in June 2021, we, we got KVM and NUMA support in the one, 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 one profit of using SCX compared to both the SMP and, and, and TDX is that, that because it's not based on the, on, on, on the VM concept, you can, you can use it also in the nested virtualization. So, so it gives some flexibility in that sense. And, and in 5.17, the the machine, machine check ex exception recover, recover, recovery was, was included so that, so that poisoned pages are, are removed from the, from, the, from the usable pages for enclaves and also the, the enclaves using those poisoned pages are killed. Uh, and, and in 6.0, we will have, have like, like for the first time support for some kind of accounting because internally there's STS has, has capability to swap enclave spaces to the regular memory, but, and we use like a private shared memory file for that, but, but, but so far it hasn't been accounted for the processes. So in, in 6.0, we will have the pages reserved from the, from the shared memory for, for private shared memory will be, will be accounted for the memory control group where the process lives. And, and also 6.0 will have support for SCX2 or Enclave dynamic memory management, which basically means that that before 6.0, you could add pages to the enclave before initialization, but, but there was no capability to dynamically allocate pages after that. So it, it has been kind of a bit limited so far for, for cloud scale workloads. And, uh, and, and, and the only future feature that I'm aware of currently is, is this AEX Notify, which is basically a countermeasure for, for, for this, this vector of attacks where you reprogram the AP, APIC, APIC timer to generate in, inputs and time, time time, the lay, how, how long the instructor stays, and so you can, you can, you can predict what, what, what the enclave is calculating, but, but more on that later. So, this, these are the IOCTOLs that you use before you run the enclave. And I, and, and it's pretty, I actually started to think that when I saw the SMP presentation that maybe once the SMP is in the upstream and, 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 and TDX is in the upstream, we could, we could possibly have like a common interface just for the part that, that, that builds the initial digest for whatever confidential workload we will have. So, this, this is the create, creates like the, like, like the, the SCX enclave control structure in, internally and the add pages, you know, basically like, like 
like add, add, add spaces to the to the enclave memory space and 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 and, and updates the digest and in it like like puts finalize finalizes the digest and after that you can you can enter to the enclave. So it's pretty similar to other technologies. And and dyna, dyna, and, and, and the feature that comes in 6.0 is is called in the SDM is Intel SDM is called SCX2, but but in some other contexts is called Enclave Dynamic Memory Management, and it provides tools to add new pages, change the page type of existing pages, and such and so forth. So so. For addition, there's this privilege instruction code. With, well, there's privilege instruction called NCLS that is used for all, all, all privilege stuff, and it has a leaf function called eAUG that basically adds a new page to the enclave. And, and in the current implementation, that's if you if you if you dereference an address inside Enclave address space that doesn't have a page table en entry, the page fault handler will call call e call e out for you. So we don't have like a separate yoctol for that. And so so for each each of these yoctols and e out, how the game goes is that 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 the enclave they 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 put like 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 a request on and the enclave have to have to access uh, accept acknowledge the the request for each space with either e accept or e accept copy instruction so that so that so 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 that so that Host, host cannot like like make modifications for a, even like a single page without enclave acknowledging that for 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 e for e accept like let's say an e out case if you if if the ho, if, if the kernel calls e out and and the enclave calls e accept the page will re, Will re receive write read write permissions. With the e accept copy, the enclave will provide some other page inside enclave that will copy the data to the to the to the augmented page. And also also with e accept copy, you can specify permissions for that page. The For permissions, we have there, there. There's a privilege instruction for for restricting permissions, and then there is, which is missing from this. There, there is this 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 e extend instruction that the enclave can call to extend the permissions. The reason why there there's not simply like a like a like like one. One one instruction for like both restricting and extending the permissions is that 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 extending does not invalid extend extending kind of implicitly invalidates all the TLB entries for for restricting that could kind of leave like 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 invalid TLB entries that would lead to the security issues. So, so when you restrict permissions, you have to you do fir first use the e-block instruction, which basically denies creating new TLB entries to, to a PTE 
e-tracks e-track instruction that that kind of starts a new this shoot down sequence so that it 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 it, it creates a counter for existing hardware dress inside the enclave and in increases this epoch number the pages that have have, have the e block called have like like the previous epoch number and 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 each time a thread leaves from 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 the cpu this counter is decreased so once the counter is zero we we know that that it's safe to safe to modify the page properties such as restricting the permissions or changing changing the page type so how how we how we do it in the kernel is that 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 we first call e block and 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 then we call e track and then we just try if the pages might or the thread might have left by themselves before before calling like like, like let's say e mod p e mod p will return like an error code if there's still threads in the from the previous epoch in the in the cpu and 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 at that point we like like put like epi exception to those 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 cores that that have still like like threads from previous epochs and then we retry, ret, retry the, the modification call but yeah for for all of these basically if Uh, let's say that you want to change the page type from like normal data page to TCS, TCS so you want to make like a new hardware thread entry point to the enclave. Uh, in the e -accept call, you specify the page type that, 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 that you accept the whole host to provide for you and if it doesn't match to the acceptation that will cause like a CPU exception so 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 that's why we need this this protocol where all of these changes done by the kernel to the enclave are are, are for each page have be, need to be accepted with either e accept copy or e accept the difference between e accept and e accept copy is that for e accept you always assume implicit it it's always assumes impl implicit like read write permissions and 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 you don't get to copy any data for e accept copy is, is different in the sense that, that that you can you can you can specify the permissions and, and copy the data when you augment a new page immediately. So you don't have to go like through the step that the steps that the page is first first with the read write permissions and then then with the le le legit permissions. KVM support is based on partitioning. There, the the their support to do also over su subscribing for 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 virtualization but it's we we come in the conclusion that doing oversubscribing is just too complicated to be useful so basically what you what 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 this 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 SCX VPC device allows is to partition the the av available EPC with between the virtual machines And, and and later on we ha, ha, we have added this 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 one yoctol for QMU, which basically basically like 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 keeps the allocations but but resets their states for 
when something bad happens in the queue and what this was like 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 Paulo's records last spring so that they don't have to if something goes wrong so that they don't have to like close the close the file and, and open it again so that it it's just just like a performance improvement so there are three ways to execute the enclave The first one is simply use the e-enter instruction, but for which you specify first of all the TCS entry, and, it, and to ECX you specify this asynchronous exit point that that uh, that will be used when when let's say when you have a, like a page fault. Uh, the CPU will will put the in enclave register state to the to the safe state area of the TCS, and then it will like 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 generate register states state that that IRET will eventually re return to the address specific, specified by ECX, and that's called asynchronous e e exit point. But there's also, when you just want to leave the enclave, there's also e exit instructions. And from asynchronous e e exit point if you want to return to the same same uh, location where you started you just call e resume because because when 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 the thread thread exits through asynchronously the cpu fill the registers already so that that e, like the ebx to the tcs entry point and, and and so that so or it will basically fill the registers so that e resume will work so, so that ebx will contain the tcs entry point and, and ecx will contain the 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 asynchronous exit point the problem with this approach is of course that that let's say that you do a syscall you need to, oh, the only way to catch such things like with 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 this raw instruction is to have a signal handler and that might be like in other use or and and that cannot be like you cannot have like like a sing, easily like a signal handler for each each thread or that's it, it's not de designed for anything like that and, and there's like million different reasons why 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 there's there's like a there's a lot, bunch of like instruction mostly like instruction that can cause jump out of the enclave other space that 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 will with the default kernel behavior basically go to go a six f signal to happen and so for for that reason. We we created a VDS so that will that will wrap all these e enter instructions and stuff like that and 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 when when like let's say you get undefined instru instruction exception it will fill this data structure called SCS enclave run that will contain all the all all, all the exception in, in information and 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 it's it's it almost like like it's it's not a function call but it all it, it for the most part it it kind of kind of is compatible with the Sysvec calling convention and and I will show that that data structure.
So it will contain the TCS entry point. What, you know, in the case of AEX, this function field, field will either contain E enter or E resume based on how you entered last time the enclave or, or if, you, if you exit from the enclave, it, exit, it, it will contain that. And, 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 and then, then there is basically just, you know, standard, standard exception in information. And and specifically for I, I haven't used this part a lot, but specifically for Intel SDK, we also provided uh, a way to provide a callback handler. But 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 in usually you just don't use this last part, but instead instead just take your next action based on the. What, what this returns, so so the so the callback is is completely optional. So the way you use it is that that you call the video so in the TCS for the TCS entry point and 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 then 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 you just if you get un, get undefined instruction, you execute that syscall for 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 the enclave and such and so forth. So, so so with this infrastructure, you 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 in poor purpose use this like let's say a syscall instruction inside the enclave and let the exception happen. And and with this information, you know exactly what happened inside the enclave, and then you can. Then, then the OS can work as a delegate, or the runtime can work as a delegate for the enclave. Uh, so, So the problem with the default e resume behavior is that that if you have like like AEX handler that is based on e resume, you can you can you you can fairly accurately time how long each in, instruction takes inside enclave by like adjusting the you know the API. I see timer rate like like the, like like a suitable value. So so to countermeasure this a, a, a new attribute for enclaves has been added called AEX notify and it it changes the e resume instruction behavior in a way that that instead of 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 the of popping the, the previous register state from from safe state area and returning where where the execution was, it will it will go to the to the entry point or or the point you know, the entry point specified in, inside TCS and and then the enclave can use this e dig CSS a instruction to return return back to the point where the execution was so that that kind of that kind of countermeasures the timing attacks because then you are just looping in the entry point you don't get like any information but is going on inside the enclave by by that method okay well these are the runtimes that I'm aware of. There, there's like there, there's probably like a bunch of others, but the first is Intel SCX SDK, which is very archived. I, I, it's it's there because AMSD and, and PCCS AMSD is this daemon that runs the coding enclave and, and, and provision certification enclave. And PCCS is just this daemon that downloads uh, certificate. Certificate, certificate for this provision certification keys 
from Intel Cloud. It's, it's, it's very programmer unfriendly. You, you don't want to use it for anything. Uh, and, but I think like the real options are, are the graphene, which is basically like a syscall sim. So you can put like any like normal Linux executable and, and, and it, will, it will provide the necessary syscall sim that when the, when, that when, when, the, uh, when the program calls a syscall, it will execute the syscall for, for the program. Enarchs that we are de developing at Profian is, is basically like container or microservice runtime based on WebAssembly. So you can compile basically any like program in any language, like, like even in, in Java or Python to a WebAssembly program and ho host it with Enarchs. Uh, <coughs> and and it all, in addition to the STX, it also supports AMD SMP and in future we are planning to add support for ARM, ARM V9 Realms and, and possibly some other hardware back and as, as they come. But, but at, the moment, at the moment, our main targets are, are, are STX and SMP. For, for, for SMP, we, we basically create like minimal VM to host web assembly runtimes without any specific operating system. Oh, where is the, there should be the, the one slide is missing, but now, no, 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 I switched to Roman, he will show the, show the Enarch's demo. All right. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you, Jarko. Uh, hi, my name is Roman. Uh, I'm an employee at Trophy and, and one of the uh, core developers of uh, the NRX open source project. I've previously worked at Docker and I've also had spent some time building large scale distributed LP1 networks. Um, yeah, so today I would like to show you how we utilize SGX at the station to secure workload uh, communications and establish trust relationship and just making TE simpler to use for application developers. So I'm going to use a demo server, which is actually just a web app and it lets us deploy WebAssembly into real TEs, real hardware via NRX. So I'll deploy a workload from the drawbridge, which is essentially a registry of uh, WebAssembly workloads. And uh, yeah, so let me just find my cursor. There we go. So this particular workload is going to be just a web app, which inside WebAssembly is gonna just do plain text TCP communication, but the NRX platform is going to provide it with TLS. So um, what happens right now actually is that the NRX platform, well, let me open the link here. Okay. For now, it's just a proof of concept. So that's why we have to accept the insecure certs. But so what happens here is that when NRX platform started, it uh, connected the SGX processor and did the measurement of the firmware of, uh, that's for SGX report, right? And also measured the NRX platform itself, as well as the workload which is being loaded into uh, itself, right? And then it sent all this data to the attestation service, which then verified the, well, the platform, the NRX hash, right? All the, all the measurements. And on successful verification of that, it issued a certificate to this workload. So it means that, uh, yeah, the workload itself just does plain text, but the NRX platform provides the TLS and transparently uh, can upgrade the connection from plain text to TLS, right? Apart from that, the certificate contains data about the identity of the workload, right? So if you had, say, two, three, N workloads, they could communicate to each other and establish trust relationships given the data in that certificate, right? And that all is transparent for application developers. Um, so I can also show you the cert. Again, for now, it's a proof of concept, but uh, you'll, you can look at it. And we're working on adding uh, actual HSMs to improve the situation. So you can see here that this certificate was issued uh, by our CA currently. And uh, this is the unique certificate issued for this particular workload and this particular CPU and this particular NRX instance. So 
every workload and each different CPU and different machine will get a different uh, certificate. Um, so apart from that, um, the last thing I think I'm gonna show you here is how we can actually do exactly the same thing on SMP. So I'm gonna run exactly the same workload, fully, completely unmodified binary, same version, same uh, workload on SMP. Sorry, that's a different workload. But uh, yeah, it's going to take, it takes some time, of course, because it has to send the computer reports and to the, the station service, uh, get it back. Uh, again, I'm going to go over the link, accept, and you'll see exactly the same workload. So, by the way, this is uh, free to use for everyone, so if you want to try it out, uh, feel free. And, uh, yeah. That's, I think, the demo. Uh, if you have any questions, then please let me know. <laughs>